All right, hey, how's it going, everybody? Retro Gamer Ryan here. Uh, with with any luck, the the final leg of the journey in Hollow Knight. Um, last stream, I made it to the final boss, the Radiance, but I could not handle it. Um, and much like the Hollow Knight uh, himself, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a matter of kind of just getting used to patterns and learning things and dying over and over again until I eventually managed to actually win. And also, while I was messing around in Steam earlier, actually messing around in Steam with OBS open, <coughs> I discovered that the game runs 60 frames a second in the capture in OBS if it doesn't have focus. I don't know what to do to fix that. I have messed with every setting I can think of. Yeah, see, the frame rate just started tanking. It's at like 25 frames a second right now. So as you can see, it's even the you know, the, the camera is kind of twitchy. But now if I go into the background, it's smoothed out. Everything is running just fine. Even the game. The game is running just fine. And sorry, I just hit the... The, the shield there, you probably heard a little boof. So I'm not sure what to do about that. Um, I don't really have a solution. Because as soon as the game comes back up, the frame rate drops again. Um, so I, I think at this point it's just going to be... We deal with it, because what else are we going to do? I mean, it's the final boss. I don't really have anything else to... to do unless I really, really, really wanted to... Um, I could go looking for the final piece of pale ore uh, just to see if I could get that last little upgrade. Um, but anyway, the, the first thing I wanted to do before I tried anything else is it occurred to me that I have at least one, if not more, unnecessary charms equipped, uh, including the compass, the wayward compass. Whoops. The wayward compass I do not need. Steady body, I probably still need, but we'll see. Um, let's see. That one I might not need. Yeah, Dream Wielder, I don't need because I can't collect soul from anything anyway. And the one time I need to use the Dream Nail, I have all the time in the world. Uh, Quick Slash is indispensable. Long Nail, I like. Um, I would almost like to switch to Mark of Pride, but first, yeah, I really want Quick Focus, so I think, yeah, I think I'm going to get rid of Nailmaster's Glory and swap in Quick Focus. I also read in a fact that you can equip too much. Um, I think it's like if, you, like if, if I wanted to use Dash Master and I only had one open, <clears throat> one open notch, I could equip it, but then I would start taking extra damage, which is kind of a neat idea. Okay, so I've got my quick focus. Mm. That should, with any luck, be good. Let's resave just in case. All right, now let's see how long it takes me to get used to the Hollow Knight fight again. Probably way too long. <laughs> Oops. Time to calm down a little.
Alright, next phase. That's it. Derpy! How's it going? Long time no see. You're just in time to see me get destroyed by the Radiance the first time in this fight. Oh, nice. I get to redo the challenge part, so I get to I get to chill for a minute and calm down. Okay, so yeah. The the Hollow Knight himself, I've I've pretty much got that fight mastered. The Radiance, on the other hand, is going to consistently destroy me. <sighs> Here we go. Death number one. <laughs> tending bar or barley tending? <laughs> I want to say, like, working hard or hardly working. Okay. Not good. Not off to a great start here. something good. That's not bad. Okay, that's death number one. <laughs> when I say death number one, I of course mean death number one of this session. I've I've died to the Radiance plenty before. Hey Dan, <laughs> this is new. You, did you oh yeah, you must have uh, you must have had to peace out before the, the Radiance stuff last time. Oh come on, Ryan. Ryan, you are better than that. I could have done that more cleverly. Okay. Doesn't matter. You get a full heal going into the Radiance, so... Okay. 
Whoa. All right. Number two. I was gonna say this is fine, but that's less fine. Maybe something I can work with. Maybe something I can use to heal. That would have been it. I'm more consistently getting to the spikes now. Lost cells. I feel like I should be familiar with that, but I'm not I'm not 100% sure what it is. They just get over there. Oh, no, he's not done. Now he's done. <sighs> get some. Get some. If only I had not double jumped. If only I had not double jumped. I do feel like I'm getting used to certain things though. So we're we're getting there. Ooh. 
Oops. Should have done that dash a little later. Nice jump. This is, like, ironically easy mode now. If you recall, when I, uh, the very first time that I, like, ever fought the Hollow Knight, I basically said, well, this is going to be impossible. There's the trick to the that, like ground slam mode. Just, oops, just go back and forth. Okay. Get the Wow, I'm I'm kind of dumb. Okay. Oh, why did I dash? I just said I'm, I'm getting used to things and then I do something stupid. Actually, wait, first let me get my shade back. I'm not sure if it would make a difference, but I was thinking of trading Long Nail. I wanted to get mark of pride yeah see that's the thing overcharmed so apparently I would now take extra damage I just turn off steady body yeah, let's try that This is going to be a little bit trickier, because now there's actually going to be some bounce back against the Hollow Knight. But I'm hoping that I can hit the Radiance from the ground, just striking upward. Almost, I was. It was almost looking like I might manage a uh, zero damage.
Two hits. I got hit two times during the fight. Alright, now let's see if Mark of Pride can hit from below. It's not going to matter too much beyond, like, the first hit. Nope. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this. Yeah, I didn't like that anyway. Yeah, Steady Body is very good. Okay, Mark of Pride gone. I wonder if I even need Long Nail. Maybe I can get rid of Long Nail also. Hmm. Can do some chip damage to her. Steady body. Thorns of agony. <laughs> Spore shroom. Maybe I can get back Nailmaster's glory. Yeah, let's see what this does. It makes me stink. Time for Smelly Boy. It's fine. It's all fine. Yeah, since there's no contact damage on the uh, the Radiance, my Stink Cloud might actually do something worthwhile. That would have worked, but I started the heal at the wrong time. 
from what I've read, this battle has seven phases, and I've been to phase two so far. So I'm honestly not expecting to win tonight. Like, I just want to get practice. Okay, I'm the wrong, facing the wrong way and everything. Yeah. Yeah, definitely got to grind for practice here. Get it doesn't matter. You get a full heal for this fight, so. wasn't fair. That wasn't fair either. I'm not sure what happened there. There were multiple times when it seemed like my uh, my dash, my shadow cloak didn't charge fast enough. for a while. Take all those. Oh yeah, I forgot. I yeah, for the next one I might turn off the the stink cuz yeah, I don't I don't think it's actually affecting her. Oh, I was going to say That wasn't very fair.
Nope. It's really not fair that uh, everything does two damage. So this is off. This doesn't appear to be helping. These scare me. Because you, you lose them if you die. So you get one try. Sharp Shadow, maybe. Although, I don't know. It seems not terribly useful. Now. And this doesn't actually make you stronger. It just makes your... Uh, makes the other side of knockback greater, which is useless to me. Coating of lifeblood that protects um, from a modest amount of damage. That almost sounds okay, except it's only good at the very beginning. You just start with a couple extra. Increases the amount of soul. Yeah. Lengthens your iframe period. Like I said, the, the Hollow Knight himself is not a challenge anymore. Get Which is saying something. Ah. Nope. 
ran out. There was nothing I could do. She tends to float above the spikes. Which puts this battle at a sort of beyond fair. Staying way too close to him there. I'm getting further and further. So far we're still... I haven't gotten past phase two yet. Nope. Stupid, why did I do that? Those aren't the beams. Honestly, I don't I don't believe I am getting further. Stuff should not do two damage in this fight. And the worst part is everything does two damage. <clears throat> Dodged that one. I'm not sure what happened.
Ooh, that was a terrible mistake. Disagree with that one. That one too. That one as well. And that. Okay, we're doing a thing, we're doing a thing. Oh boy, we are doing a thing. Okay, so luck prevailed once. Uh. <laughs> Say, don't you dare kill me. I'm not allowed to die at this part anymore. Get that wasn't fair. Oops. 
Nope, that was dumb. Just when I had it. Oh, hey! I think I did it. I think I did it.
That's the good ending? The good ending, you actually die. Oh. <laughs> that was therapeutic. Oh man, I wish I wish I could say the same for the experience. Ooh, ooh, aha. Although I gotta say, overall, um the first few phases do feel harder than the last ones. I like that it was the uh, the Hollow Knight's shade, kind of holding the uh, the Radiance's face. <laughs> Bloodborne next. Oh, you know I haven't I haven't decided what the next game is going to be for uh, for Ryan plays. It's between a few. I know Clage is back from. Uh, I think he's back from his. Kansas City trip, which means I should probably start The World Ends With You soon. But, I mean, I do still have plenty of, uh, plenty of other options, and a lot of stuff that I just want to play. Whew. So that was really the, and hit Lost Levels. Hey, I have a World 9 Challenge patch. I'm, I'm done with the Lost Levels forever. It better not be like, there's one other ending. You just have to do even even more stuff. Ending th three. Dream no more. Okay. There's apparently an e extra bit of... Uh, of ending if you've completed Mr. Mushroom's quest by talking to him everywhere. Then there's a little scene. I don't even know who Mr. Mushroom is. I've never seen this guy. You have to have the Spore Shroom charm on in order to talk to him. Right, that is officially the ending. 85%? Yeah, still 85%. Um, I know almost everything I have left to do, and I'm not interested in doing any of it. Um, because I would also have to beat the White Defender, which is like a super powerful version of the Dung Defender. Which, the Dung Defender would be, would be relatively easy at this point. Um... But the White Defender, I'm not so sure. And then I would also have to do the uh, the Trial of the Fool. I think I'd have to do Mr. Mushroom's quest. Uh, I'd have to get all of the charms. And I, would, I think that would pretty much pick up that extra 15%. So now I have a full game clear file. Not that it says anything special. It's just like, hey, you did it. Good job. So yeah, I guess the Hollow Knight, or the actually the Hollow Knight and the, the guy you play as, they were both born from the Void. Uh, they were both created by the Pale King as part of the process of like trying to seal, or trying to create a permanent seal on the Radiance. Uh, so I guess with his mission complete, he'd have no more reason to exist. So yeah, he would vanish. Although I would think the same would happen for Hornet, because Hornet was made in the same process. So that, I'm not so sure. Ooh, yeah, if you're stopping if you're stopping by Kent, we, yeah, we totally need to, uh, to hang out, Derpy. Let me know, let's see, you said next weekend? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I should be completely free now 
Actually, hold on. When you say next weekend, are you are you talking this coming weekend? The uh, like start of September, working up to, to Labor Day? Because if so, I mean, Carrie is not even going to be in town, so it's not like we're going to have any plans at all. I'm I'm just sort of existing and trying to get some work done, and beyond that, I'm just kind of kind of here. Sweet. <laughs> uh, the Pale King was the um, he was the king of Hallow Nest. Uh, this game's story is weird and not terribly clear, and they they sort of do that on purpose because you, as the as the knight, as one of the vessels, you were not given prior knowledge of anything, so all you get is what you learn from characters. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty weird. The the entirety of Hollow Nest is uh, decaying due to the radiance radiating outward this infection in an attempt to destroy everything as punishment for the Pale King trying to make everybody forget about her. Cool, yeah, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to schedule something. Yeah, obviously Carrie will be back by the, uh, by the 10th. I think she comes back on, like, the 4th or 5th, but... But yeah. So anyway, yeah. Hollow Knight. Weird story. Very fun game once you get all the movement tech. Before you have all the movement tech, it is a pain in the butt. <laughs> Acquire all mask shards. I believe I'm missing four. Uh, Salubra's Blessing you just buy once you have all the charms. I am missing a bunch. World Soul, all the Vessel Fragments, I'm missing two or three of those. Defeat the False Knight, and then something in between there. Oh, that'll be the, um... I can't remember exactly what he's called, but there's a, uh, there's like a dream version of the False Knight that's more powerful, and that's... That's one that you have to beat. Yeah, Soul Master I beat. Soul Tyrant I beat. Broken Vessel, Lost Kin. Dung Defender. Uh, and I believe he's... I believe the White Defender is DLC. And because of that, he's not in the standard list here. Mantis Lords. Yeah, Leave Zote to Die. I believe that's... Um, really early on, there was a like a mini-boss that had him... Had him all clenched up, tied up, and I think if you uh, don't save him and fight the that mini boss, then you've left Zote to die. Uh, let's see, that one is for getting twenty four hundred essence. Those two. I'm not sure about those two. Bring peace to the Grey Mourner. I know where the Grey Mourner is, but I'm not too uh, too concerned because it sounds pretty tough. She gives you a flower, and you have to take it like almost all the way across the map without taking damage and without fast travel. And I don't like that. Yep, all of these. Trial of the Warrior, Trial of the Conqueror, but not the Trial of the Fool. Yep, beat the Hollow Knight, beat the Hollow Knight with Hornet, beat the Radiance. <laughs> speedrun. Now, the speedrun's like an hour and a half right now, so meh. 100% completion, that's still doable, but I don't care. Speed completion under 20 hours. I, I mean, I did 37 hours not knowing where things are. If you knew exactly where everything was, that wouldn't be that bad. Steel Soul Mode, never. Never even going to do it. Never going to try it. Uh, Steel Soul Mode is... You are not allowed to die. You die, game over. Start over from the beginning. Uh, let's see. Keen Hunter is... I think I was... 10 creatures behind, and then you just beat more of them for the others. Not sure about those. And then... Actually, one of those down there is probably for uh, the White Defender. 
and I'm not sure about the other. So yeah, that's that's pretty much everything. Particle effects low, particle effects normal. I want to see something. Ooh, actually, wait a minute. What if I turn VSync on? Oh, you have got... Okay, I was going to say you have got to be kidding me. No, no. 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 Oh, you. Oh, my. Jeebus. That was all it was. That was all it ever was. I just had to turn on V-Sync. <laughs> I spent 37 hours with a 20 FPS capture. Now, it was only the capture. The game itself runs just fine. In fact, that, well, the game runs m slightly better, and it, there's like a motion blur effect now that I like. The controls feel a little bit more responsive, too, so I, I did hard mode myself a little bit for 37 hours. Uh, if I had known about this, Earlier on, I'd have started over. I feel like such an idiot right now. All right, there, there we go. There's, there's a crashed frame rate. Yeah, see that that's running garbage for me too. Although not quite as bad as for you guys. All right, never mind. This was not the solution. This was not the solution we hoped for. Until we get in here. It's beautiful in here. Alright, never mind. <laughs> oh, I was gonna... I was gonna have a fit. Okay, so V-Sync was not the solution. It actually would have been more of a problem. Yeah, I wonder if I... If I turn those particle effects back off, or you can't turn them off, you can only turn them low. Okay, particle effects low. Yeah, I'm seeing tiny dips in the frame rate, like it'll drop to like 56. Nope, nope, that's still terrible. Yep, that's still pretty terrible. Okay, I'm I don't feel so bad now. Okay. So yeah, that is that is Hollow Knight in its entirety. I guess ultimately the um, the the best solution in this uh, in this situation would have been to have a separate PC running the game, and then you know capture that via HDMI, and that's basically what I you know, that's exactly what I do for like the PS4. Uh, it would work for the Switch as well, except they still haven't actually announced a release date for the Switch version of the game. So I don't know. <laughs> you need to upgrade and send me your your R9 290. I would think the R9 290 would have no problem with this, but uh, but no, no. the The solution is for me to to get my own video card, but I can't justify that because uh, there are so few PC games that I actually want to stream. And uh, yeah, everything else. 
works well enough that uh, like Stardew Valley runs 60 frames a second. Uh, what else did I test? Oh yeah, Magic Engine ran 60 frames a second. It's just... I believe it's primarily an issue with Unity. Uh, let me play with one other thing, because now that I've I've seen... Okay, particle effects on, they're off. Yeah, frame rate has tanked again. What I want to test... Actually, quite a few of the games in my Steam library library are probably doable. All right, so 13 frames a second. Now let's just see what happens if Hollow Knight loses focus. 60 frames a second. Unity, shut up. <laughs> this is the problem. Um, and I don't know why it does it. It's... I suspect it's an issue with Unity specifically that when the main window has focus, it's doing something in the foreground that is eating up. I don't know if it's eating up. Well, it's not eating up CPU because my, my CPU gauge is only at like 26%. Uh, it's doing something weird with the GPU that, I don't know, it just it, it runs a million times better in the background, but I lose controller input, so... I can't play it like that. If I could play it like that, then that yeah, you know, that wouldn't be a problem. Assuming there wasn't any lag in the preview. <laughs> the problem is it's Unity, basically. Um, Unity is getting better and better and better, but it's still not there. Um, Actually, one Unity game that I'm really looking forward to is Overland, which... I mean, technically, I have. <laughs> well, Wolf Quest's problem is a different thing in and of itself. But yeah, when, when Carrie became friends with Adam Atomic on, uh, on Twitter, he sent us just a whole bunch of, uh, of Steam keys. So I have... I think I have a few games that aren't technically even out, but they exist on Steam. Uh, but I've been in the Overland Early Access program for like two years or something like that. And they're just now like showing semi-finalized versions. Although uh, Adam was just tweeting for help with uh, some weird bugs that he was running into. But, but yeah, Overland is really cool. It's It's got this weird sort of... Uh, it's really hard to explain the aesthetic. There are several games that that look similar to it uh, these days, but it's this it's sort of a it's a roguelike where you assemble and lead a band of survivors west from uh, somewhere in the the northeast in the uh, aftermath of some sort of weird event. And it's like these weird monster insect things that kind of burrow up out of the ground. So there's some sort of disaster going on. And if you're not familiar with Overland, I I see a lot of Overland in my Twitter feed, but that's only because Adam and I, I think we follow each other. But uh, but yeah, Overland is really cool. I would uh, I would highly recommend it once it finally comes out. Um, yeah, let me see what the status is of that on Steam. Give me that sweet, sweet Steam. I don't know what you guys are seeing right now. I'm just seeing Steam full screen. Overland. Played for 80 minutes. Purchased. Okay, yeah, it's not two years. I Officially, I purchased it on January 12th, 2016. Are we in the betas? We are not in the betas. And it doesn't have a beta program, so whatever version I've got here is the only version that exists on Steam right now. Just seeing bugs? Well, that's all I've got. I've got a computer full of bugs here. A puzzle game with a roguelike skin. I like that. 
A turn-based post-apocalyptic road trip simulator. That is about right. You have to, like, strategize based on, like, if it's raining, the bugs have reduced hearing, so you can make more noise without being in danger. And, uh... It's just all kinds of really neat stuff. It's it it it's really good, um, and it's really hard. I I've made it to like the third biome, which I think in the final version they're gonna have names, but it was just called Biome Three last time I played, and it was roughly halfway across the U.S. But yeah, you have to you have to manage fuel if you have a vehicle because there's not much fuel, and if you run out of fuel, you gotta hoof it. And then there's bugs everywhere, and it's... Ooh, it's, it, it's scary. And you can, uh... You can recruit dogs. And every now and then, due to a bug, a dog will know CPR. I think Adam said he wanted to leave in the bug where every dog knew CPR. Um... Yeah, I think that's... That's probably all I've got. I can't walk because I don't have control. But yeah. Um, so... Hollow Knight, uh, I'm going to give it a little review right now. Like I said, it is it is rough to start, but once you get some movement tech, and wall jump's not enough, double jump is great, Mothwing Cloak is great, and although I don't use it that much, um, the, the Crystal Dash is awesome. Uh, depending on where you are, it has infinite range. Like you could, you'll, you'll just go until you hit something. Which is really fun. There was a uh, a speed run of the bad ending at SGDQ, and it was a very interesting run because you, you, there were no significant uh, skips or or glitch exploits or anything like that. It was just it was all really precise movement. And having fought the Hollow Knight now, and seeing the way that they had to fight the Hollow Knight, that I, I've gained a new appreciation for the speedrun because half the reason that I was able to do as well as I was is because I have the uh, the Shadow Cloak, which, when it's in use, makes your dash invincible, which is so, so useful. Um, but yeah, let me, let me go ahead and close out... Hollow Knight. So yeah, uh, GeForce GT645 can play the game just fine. Doesn't work so well streaming it. And yet here we are. But yeah, anything, anything even just a little bit better I think would be totally fine. I messed around on my laptop and According to OBS, it was running 60 frames a second, but the, the game could not do it. Um, but that's that's like a Radeon HD 6250? That sounds right, 6250M. Uh, not, not a great GPU, not as good as the one that I originally got with it, but my laptop runs and I really can't complain as a result yeah anything that starts with radeon hd you're already one foot in the toilet it was great at the time it was top of the line for a laptop gpu at the time and anything that starts with geforce gt and there's no x you're in a similar boat uh Although not quite as bad. Yeah, if it's a Radeon, it's got to start with, you know, R9, if not X. Corn Dan just subscribed again. It's Is it that time of the month? <laughs> that time of the month. My bot is supposed to say something when that comes up. And Chad is supposed to tell me something when that comes up. It's weird that that doesn't happen. I'm... I'm a little, uh, I'm a little confused by... The way that works. I guess when you resubscribe, there's like a, a share button or something. 
but I mean, even even the the chat is failing me. <laughs> well, Botsy Botsy can't do that at all. Um, Uber Guildmaster has that ability, but uh, huh? That's really weird. It's it's like it's not it's not properly sharing the way it's supposed to. Um. Because I'm supposed to get like a little notification in gray. It's supposed to say like, so and so, just subscribed for however many months or whatever. And the only reason I know that you hit it is because it came up on the the layout, and I can actually see the layout right now. But but yeah, Derpy, I've uh, I've actually had sub f since June twenty eighth. I want to say, because June twenty like yeah, I think June twenty eighth was the start of my subscription. I have. Uh, Got my emotes. My get the gray for four ninety nine, the red for nine ninety nine, and the gold for twenty four ninety nine. The the gold one I need to redo because he's not gold enough. Like I literally just uh, I found it's actually from a uh, an Amazon product listing i just found a really good image of a uh, of a cart shell and then i looked up googly eyes and there was an awesome face that had googly eyes instead of the the normal awesome face eyes and i just i just kind of got tied them together and uh then played around with the colors in photoshop uh, what i should do is take because i actually have amazon product photos myself and they're really high quality. So I need to redo my things. Uh, shell sales are, are a little tricky right now because I um, I switched over to a professional seller account and it actually took the shells offline for a few days. Um, we didn't quite get to the, the 40 for the first month, but it's one of those things where you have to kind of let it go for a few before, you know, just let everybody see that they're there, get in a couple of product reviews, and then the sales should finally increase. But, like, since I submitted the extra documentation, I have sold a grand total of one shell. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, here's my sales for 30 days. Not super impressive. Those were units. The the one day, for some reason, I, I sold five. So these are... These are not doing great yet, but there's really not too much I can do. It's just a matter of getting the word out there. And I actually have a shell sale, a red shell on eBay and something on Etsy. So it's a good thing I kept those up and running. I like it. But, uh, but yeah, that's the, the state of things. They're... It's, uh, sales are slow, and I'm totally fine with that, because, boop, because the, the fewer sales I get, the less work I have to do. <laughs> and I still need to do, like, a, a fire sale on the completed carts that I still have, because I'd like to clear off some shelves, or er, some, some shelves in my office, and I've still got, uh, I've still got some NES stuff, although I had a couple of um, a couple of good, a couple of good like bulk sales from a couple of guys who uh, were looking to get some NES games. And I've still got all the other stuff. Oh, let's see what what else should we talk about? I'm done with game. Now what? <laughs> what I need to do is I need to look through my finished layouts I just minimized OBS I bet it didn't do anything where Ryan plays Ryan plays let's see <laughs> yeah yeah philosophy I it, how um How's the, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the right wording, like, what what sort of um, opportunities do you have as a, a philosophy grad? Um, like, is it, is it mostly sort of scholarly type things, or are there, are there more, um, 
ah, this is really hard to word because I don't want to sound offensive or anything. I was going to be like, what what practical applications are there for that? But yeah, it's it's kind of it's always hard to to tell what a certain major is going to sort of lead to, unless it's one of the easy ones like computer science. Obviously, you learn how to program, you you go program. Um, you learn how to draw, you go draw. You learn how to do like. I was gonna say astrophysics. You go and be an astrophysicist. You, you do. Uh, you go work for. For a nice, nice cushy aerospace company. Okay, cool. We calling you Professor Beganski. Yeah, Dan learned to rocket science and became a rocket scientist. Boom. I learned to be a dork, and now I play video games on the internet. Yeah, Dan, what is your next long project? Star Ocean is done. Law? That's that's an interesting one. Although there's, you know, another entire set of education you got to go through at that point. Although I don't know what all you have to do to just be like legal staff for a company rather than like an an acting lawyer in court. It's it, it's it I don't it turns out I really don't know too much about how um job opportunities work outside of my field. <laughs> Who to thunk? But yeah, when I do decide to do the fire sale, what I'll probably do is just post like a a Google sheet or something to, to Twitter and just be like, Hey everybody, here's what I got. Uh, here's what I'm asking. If you want a bunch of stuff, make me an offer. We'll figure something out. It'll be, it'll be one of those where I just kind of start checking them off and figuring it out. But yeah, Dan, your next long project. Yeah. Dead cells. Yeah. What is, what is dead cells? I gotta, I gotta look this up. I feel like I should know this. Dead cells. Ooh, I like the 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 image. Ooh. Well, this look kind of looks like Hollow Knight, except a, a different aesthetic. Although it says roguelike Metroidvania, is it just procedurally generated? Because that's not roguelike. It doesn't. It doesn't appear to play like a roguelike. People don't know what rogue is. Souls light combat. Permadeath, no. Oh, is this the one where, like, if you did? No, I don't think this is the one. There's like there was a game where if you, if you die, too much. It deletes your save, but that's not this. This that that's like a, a higher profile game. Yeah, I like procedurally generated. Oh, you got your Vita. Nice. The few games that uh, that are like absolute exclusives, even without like hacking the uh, the PlayStation TV, are pretty good stuff. I'd love to be able to play Uncharted: Golden Abyss, but there is a there's one puzzle that requires motion controls, and then there's also one where you have to like hold the Vita up to a light source, and that's just that's so stupid. Hellblade, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, they um Yeah, Sam Skinner was playing that not too long ago, and uh I I liked her review of it. Basically she said that it felt like it was trying too hard to do too many different things, and uh came off as mediocre in most of them and because of that it would have been better off not trying to jam as many like sort of genre tropes together oh 
while you're playing Shiren. Yeah, I love... You know, there you go. When, when you're talking about a roguelike, Mystery Dungeon is like the roguelike other than rogue. Although rogue is not roguelike. You can't be like something if you are that something. You know what I had to do? You know what I ought to do is I oughta boop because it feels kind of kind of eerie in here being completely silent audio source or is it media source no is it VLC video source Ugh. audio input capture mm -hmm. mm, excuse me Where are you at? VLC video source? Yeah, there we go. There we go. It's going to be too loud. It's going to be too loud. Too loud. Yeah, we're going to we're going to cut it way down. We're going to knock 40 decibels off of it. There. Now it's just it's just late music in the background. Yeah, um, when the, the repro thing was still going on, I was, um, like, some of the next games that were in the queue for repro theater were the two Mystery Dungeon games that I offered, and, uh, it's kind of unfortunate that I didn't get to them, because I really wanted to play them. I've, I've played more Shiren than Torneko, but I, I just, I love... I love the whole roguelike in the Dragon Quest universe thing. It's it's such a cute thing. It's, it's such a cute concept. Yeah, I think one of these days I'd like to one of these days I'd like to put one of those in UberQuest and play it. That's that's how I'm going to put that. But yeah, let's see. I haven't started Xenogears yet. Is anything in the queue? Because in addition to the the um, bounty board, there's also a queue. And the trick is that the queue is just... So the board is the six oldest things in the queue. And then anyth anything else in the queue just appears on a different page. Boop, boop, submit. Okay, so the queue outside of the bounty board is currently empty. Yeah, the SNES uh, Mystery Dungeon games are great. The The other ones are, are also really fun. And it's kind of neat to see how the Shiren series has kind of progressed as it's going along, just because uh, you know, it, it got its start there. And um, that, I think, is the most prolific in terms of just systems, because it's got, like... It's got the Vita game, it's got a couple on the Wii, and one on the DS, which I think is a remake of the first one. It's even got a Dreamcast game that's like a spin-off. Let's see. Boop. I'm on the Wi-Fi, right? Yeah, I'm on the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna be like, this will only respond if I'm on the Wi-Fi, because that's how I like it. I'm logging into the uh, the back end. I'm actually I just started this morning working on a uh, a back end for myself for the UberQuest site so that I don't have to go through PHP my admin to to look all this stuff over because it's ugh. it's a pain. Quests. You heard it here first. the The bounty board table in the database is called quests. Yeah, Persona 2, Innocent Sin, which I got to double check. I have a Persona 2 Japanese, I think it's Innocent Sin. If it's not, I need to get a Japanese copy to be as legit as possible. I blame PHP. I, I always blame PHP. I've just been uh, a little lazy. PHP, my admin, is... Really powerful, but I don't want really powerful. I want just give me my data and let me do what I want to do with my data. 
Yeah, Innocent Sin is the one that did not make it over to the U.S., which is kind of unfortunate because it's sort of the prequel. Like, Eternal Punishment comes just after Innocent Sin, but the way the stories are built, they're essentially standalone, even though they have mostly the same characters. Actually, I'm going to run over and grab the bin full of games. The bin full of games. I've, I've got like 20 bins full of games. Actually, I just got all my NES carts out because I wanted to index them and uh, make a list of everything that I actually have um, for when I decide to expand my collection. And it turns out I really don't have that much. Um, and right now, all of the carts are over there in rows, except for Maniac Mansion because I just overnighted Maniac Mansion to Carrie because she is going to have Ron Gilbert sign the cart. And I am so happy about that. There is there is the PSP version. I would rather, in terms of uh, of doing it for UberQuest, just because UberQuest is built for 4x3, I'd rather do the PlayStation version using a fan translation. Um, but we do have a PlayStation TV down here. I can... And I, I think every, every SMT Universe game we own in at least two different copies, two, two different versions, because I'm, uh, I'm crazy, and Atlas had a sale, and I was like, all right, I'll spend $100 and get, like, 20 games. All right, be right back. We in there. Persona 2. Innocent Sin. I do indeed have it. I get to be legit. I think I um I tweeted a photo not too long ago of uh, I was going through the manual and Igor his little uh, his little blurb in the manual calls him Egol I G O A L. I, you can't see that. That I just find kind of hilarious. There's like a... It's not a tarot card because it's not double-sided, but... Or it's not symmetrical. But it's got the SMT logo. It's like a it's like a hollow foil Louis Cipher uh, illustration card. It kind of looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. So much weird stuff. I, I love how good a condition this stuff tends to be in too. There's like an ad for the the trading card series. There's like an SMT trading card set from the 90s we got this card we got the the like warranty card the obi of course because that would be the first thing to disappear but when you get a japanese game boom you pretty much always get it and the best part of all this is the price i got this at hard off it was um Categorized as junk because it's an extremely common game. So it was a dollar. <laughs> yeah, I, I showed the front, but let me show it again. <laughs> Price tag. 108 yen with tax. So I will be all set for that. Yeah, that's a thing that they do. Um, because uh, 
people tend to to trade in games a lot more often in Japan because you, you know you just don't have space to to have collections. And so when the games are really really common in America, usually a store will just not take it if they have too many copies. Uh, in Japan, they'll take it and just not give you anything for it. Um, but they kind of guilt trip you into parting with it anyway because it's like well it would be bad for the environment to throw it away and you're not going to be able to get rid of it anywhere else so we'll take it off your hands we'll do you that favor <clears throat> and so they end up trading games in for nothing uh, they don't even get tested and they just put them in like the junk bin and charge a buck for them the cart wouldn't work on an nes i'm guessing it just needed cleaned or like the tiniest bit of fixing. Man, box DuckTales 2 for a dollar. That must be nice. And the answer to the question, have I, have we, oh, it wouldn't work on an SNES? Dang. Even dumber problem. Uh, Thimbleweed Park. Technically, I did not play it, but I've watched a complete playthrough of it, and Carrie has played through it. Um, because, and I think, I think it's available for sale. There's a, a Thimbleweed art, a Thimbleweed Park art book on uh, Fangamer, and Carrie did the layout for it. Like she got all the the resources from Ron Gilbert and all the, the other people, and then she put it together. Boxed Bionic Commando for five. I I got a I got a box Earthbound for twenty five. It's like my only good story. <laughs> Just didn't work on the wrong system. Oh man, I love that. I'd love to be able to, to to have a story like that where, I get something, super cheap because somebody is dumb. <laughs> I couldn't get it to work, because I didn't do it right. And I'm sorry, I don't know why I defaulted to the drawl for that. That's that's not okay. But that's true. Oh, I'm surprised you remember that, Dan. Yeah, I, I totally got a uh, a GameCube component cable for eight dollars because the exchange did not know what it was. Yep. Now that was actually not that long ago. It was like maybe three years ago. Like they were already going for 150 to 200 dollars, and um, I guess somebody traded in a GameCube, and that was the the cables that they had. They had no idea, so they gave him like 50 cents for it. He didn't know any better, and uh, he just they 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 were listed as miscellaneous GameCube uh, accessory. And they were eight dollars, and I'm using them. They they work perfectly. That was actually one of the um, one of the reasons that I upgraded all of my equipment so that I could do uh, component capture and component to the TV was for the GameCube because I just I really wanted to be able to use those cables. And it's kind of a nice setup because like. Everything up to Gen 5 is composite. Gen 6 and 7 are component, and then Gen 8 is HDMI. A Game Boy player for his component cables. And when you say a combo set of component cables, what exactly do you mean? Because the component cable is just the video cable. Uh, you have to have a separate cable for the um for the audio which is kind of stupid but i mean it is what it is although people have made um it turns out there is digital audio output on the port on the back but no cable ever made use of it and it's already in like uh optical format so if you have the right sort of hardware and conversion you can make like a toss link adapter and uh combine it with the cable and get a, uh, a component plus, you know, either either Toslink or uh, SPDIF digital audio output. This component for GameCube and Xbox and PS2. I 
I've I've never heard of this, and I've done a lot of research. I know um, you can get component cables that are for Xbox, PS2, and Wii. Um, they and that cable does not work on the GameCube because they it, it just plugs into the uh, the standard multi out port. But it would be really cool if that worked out. I just haven't seen that. As far as I was aware, um, the only component cable that existed was the nintendo branded one because the the uh conversion algorithm is actually like copyright or trademark or whatever but yeah that'd be really cool if that worked out for you but yeah i'm thinking because like i said i was uh i was working on Uber Quest backend stuff. I might go back. Ooh, GameCube to HDMI. I I have not heard of that either, but I haven't been paying any attention. That would be cool. And that would be well, it wouldn't be easier, but it would be it would be nicer for uh, modern hookup. Yeah, that that sounds pretty recent. And like I said, like I just said, I'm. I have not been uh, keeping up with GameCube video stuff because uh, just because uh, the PS2 uh, only does component and also RGB for whatever reason, um, like that whole generation, I want to keep on uh, component output. I even have a, uh, a VGA to component adapter for the Dreamcast, but it introduces so much lag that I had to get one that had a just like a, a, a VGA pass through. So if I play Dreamcast stuff, the pass through will actually I'll be I'll be playing using the VGA pass through on the TV, but then the capture will be component. Which is silly, but it's it's the solution that will work. So OSSC, yes. That reminds me that the last like three times that Maddie has come over to our house he has brought the ossc and then we have not gotten around to doing anything with it he, he wants to show it off and it's like we just don't get around to it most recently he brought his uh his analog nt mini because he's got all the 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 pirate cores and just like a, an sd card full of roms that's pretty fun just messing around with that watching Rick and Morty. Yeah, the Analog NT Mini is cool. It would be nice if... Um, well, it would be way out of spec, but it would be neat if, um, if you could use different controllers. And actually, Super NES to NES conversion would be easy. Because it's, it's actually the same pinout, just arranged differently. And the signals are the same. Uh, there's just additional bits on the bus for Super NES, and then you just continue reading the bus longer, and you get you know more button inputs, which is kind of neat. There's outside of that conversion, um, there's no reason why an NES game can't read all of the inputs from a Super NES controller. It's just never been done because why would you? Why would you make a game that requires a controller adapter that doesn't exist? AVS is cool too. The uh, the latest generation is it's technologically at the exact same level as the analog NT Mini. It's just like a third of the price. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I would almost rather if I was gonna do something like that. I would almost rather get the uh, the Ultra HDMI like conversion kit for. Just about everything. No, yeah, yeah. The AVS is uh, is it's limited by design because uh, yeah, he only wanted it to have the ability to play NES games and you know nothing else. Whereas the analog NT Mini has an SD card slot and that breaks it wide open. Yeah, no composite output, but that's because if you want composite output in a thing that plays NES cartridges, you get an NES. 
Yeah, somebody somebody needs to uh, make like a next gen. Uh, it would be really almost impossible to work out at a technological level, but like a a next gen zapper. Sort of like the the GunCon Four, which I actually still have the the things for the GunCon Four, but that's it works in a totally different way. It works like a Wii remote instead of a uh, you know instead of using a photo diode. So the the protocols are completely incompatible. Womp womp. By the way, is I still can't hear the music. Is the music at a good level, it should be like way, way, way down low. That's something I might start messing around with is just having having a, a music, like a background music channel just at all times. And I can just flip it on and off. I do have to remember to turn it back up because I think the, the pre-roll will be turned down too. Yeah, I, I just wanted to have it as a as like a background rumble. And I have no idea what, what music is playing because I, again, can't hear it myself. Dead Cells. Yeah, I think if um, if you're going to stream Dead Cells, I might uh, I might head up to my office and work on the UberQuest backend and, and watch you. Because I actually, I went into this stream with... Uh, I don't have a sore throat, but I feel a little bit hoarse. I'm sure I sound a little bit hoarse. And I'm about to run out of coffee. So. If I if I tap on that, I'm going to lose the chat. Actually, can you can you uh, DM that to me on Twitter? So I can uh, check it out later when I get back upstairs. Cool, thank you. But yeah, I think I'm gonna. I've been sitting here chewing the the fat or or what have you long enough. I think it's uh, probably time to to call a night. So yeah, anybody anybody who's watching who has not yet followed me on uh, on Twitch, please give me a follow. Um, if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, uh, please subscribe there and come back over to Twitch. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier. Uh, I have sub as a Twitch affiliate. Uh, if you are so inclined, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe. That would be that would be that would be great. And uh, yeah, for my other streaming program, which I'm going to be getting back to probably very very soon here, um, uh, it's called UberQuest. Uh, you can vote on the next game, uh, and you do so using gold, which is just like a sort of it's just a an on-site on-program currency, and subscribers get additional bonus gold every month and so that is a cool thing that will help you help me help you and you get the emotes you get the emotes just like dan just like dan put out there my my retro googly eyes uh so yeah i think that's all i've got um everybody have a wonderful night i will probably be back Logically, I have no reason to say that I won't be back tomorrow. Uh, if it doesn't work out that way, it doesn't work out that way. But, I mean, I've got, like, one errand to run in the morning, and then it's just work on projects and then stream if I get around to streaming. And, uh... All right, Derby, I will uh, I will see you later as well. Uh, and, again, we, we need to coordinate that time to, uh, to get together next weekend. So that would be cool. But, yeah, uh, everybody have a great time. Great weekend great well not weekend yet because i'm gonna i'm gonna see y'all tomorrow potentially i'll say you have a great weekend then and uh and yeah i'll see everybody next time this is retro gamer ryan signing off have a good one everybody